Joining us now is space and planetary scientist Andy Lowne. Good morning. Hello, Andy. Uh, good morning, Anne and Steve. How are you doing? Well, yeah, we're doing nice. well. And you know what space nuts we are. And neither <laughs> of us knew there was a spaceport being built in the Shetlands. Oh, yes, this is really important on the Isle of Unst. It's quite interesting because it's really at the top of the Shetland Islands, so it's very, very far north. Uh, and this place was famous anyway. There was an RAF base there, so it, it's well known to have facilities there which, which were closed down. And the guy who's running this um, is a former RAF man himself, and he's really done everything he can to boost the economy of the area because he's really interested in the area. And they've actually got this, this facility now under construction. And it's been going on for quite some time, since about 2017. I mean, they had a little bit of a failure with finance with a dodgy company trying to invest in them, which wasn't really there. But they've had some serious investments for some major players now, with Lockheed Martin involved, the British government heavily involved, and other organisations, a big Danish billionaire has thrown some money at this project. And the idea is to have a vertical launch facility from these islands. And, and they're starting to actually put things together now. They're, the first launch of first, first of three launch platforms is being constructed at the moment. They put this interesting announcement out that they want the British government to hurry up, you know, and get and, and get the license approved for launching. But if you remember, Virgin did exactly the same thing, sort of to push people a bit. They'll get the launch license by August, and that's probably the right process. Everything is, is reasonably good there. There's an environmental issue which has been going on for a, a period of time. But I think they've agreed not to launch rockets uh, in, in about a, a one, two month period in order to protect wildlife. But generally speaking, since the site was actually used by the Royal Air Force anyway, and they'll be reopening a, a landing strip and things like that. I, I, I think there's a bit of a, a nonsense regarding the environmental thing because there's, a, there's already been strong facilities there. But this has a great potential for Britain. This is a vertical launching thing because the satellites launched from here will be absolutely perfect for polar orbit. That's north to south going up and down, if you like. Uh, and sun synchronous orbits, which means as the spacecraft, the, the, the satellite orbits the Earth, it stays on the sun side of it. So the Earth essentially rotates underneath you as you go around. That's perfect for Earth observations, where all the best spy satellites, for instance, go in these polar orbits, because you can keep an eye on what everything that's going on underneath you. And that's absolutely ideal, especially in Scotland, where you've actually got um, CubeSat, which is a, a small satellite about the size of a couple of loaves of bread. Um, and these small satellites are being built in Scotland on a regular basis. So to have its own launch facility as well would be a really big boon. And there's a lot of companies lined up for this one, actually, to help launch the facilities, what, you know, what sort facilities of, which is really quite important. Andy, uh, what, what sort of rockets are we looking at here? Because, I mean, that, that, that launch platform doesn't look like... A, I mean, it's not like you see it at Cape Canaveral. Well, of course, yes, they've got to be relatively small rockets because you're getting relatively small payloads under 2,000 kilos uh, into polar orbit. So they don't need to be huge. Um, some of the rockets which are coming in here now is the Pathfinder, which is going to be uh, a great deal of it is being used, I think, by 3D printing, one of these great 3D printing programs, which is working. It's already been tested in America. A, di a different company has tested this, and it works perfectly well. So, yes, you're not going to be seeing Saturn Vs or, or anything like uh, Falcon 9s being launched from here. But that's not the design of the facility. The facility is to launch other rockets to take satellite payloads into polar orbit. So you're actually targeting your market, which is really good because this is a market which is really going to expand. Again, it's the kind of thing that Virgin were targeting, if you like, the smaller end of the satellite launch facility. They're never going to launch a geostationary satellite mm. from this position, but that's not what they're aiming for anyway. Brilliant. And there's a number Brilliant. of companies, in fact, even suborbital rockets being launched, test launches from there, which could happen at the end of this year. Oh, well, there's a lot to look forward to. Andy, thank you for shedding some light on it all. Thanks very much Brilliant. indeed. Brilliant.